Hello, I'm Rick Stivers. I'd like to welcome you to Young Martin's Reels. Today's project... Prior to getting back to that reel, uh, I thought I'd show you guys uh, how my fishing guide Malo's trip went this week, or t today. Uh, he'll be posting his videos on OCD uh, fishing here uh, in another three or four days usually. But uh, he helped me out by sending me these. I just wanted you guys to see them. Today's project is going to be this Pen Fierce 2. I actually have three of these Fierce reels that I'm going to be doing right here in a row. Uh, one is a Pen Fierce original. They don't call them Pen Fierce 1. It's just a Pen Fierce. Uh, it's a 5,000 model. And I have a this Pen Fierce 2, which is a 3,000 model. And the other one is going to be a regular Pen Fierce, the, the original version. And it's a 4,000 model. And I'm going to do each one of these reels and get them ready. I'm going to be moving them out to my boat. So uh, this reel performs beautifully to begin with. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, the clicker works. The drag works on it like it's supposed to. The anti-reverse is functional. Now, uh, Chris out there doesn't like these reels because they uh, don't have an anti-reverse override. And uh, I think I can live without that. I like these reels well enough. I'm going to be putting these on my boat and using them. So that's where these are going. All right, we're going to start off by removing the spool. And I'm going to remove the handle. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and lubricate this as I go so I don't forget it. I have a tendency to forget sometimes to lubricate the handles when um, I don't do it at the beginning. So let's go ahead and Pop this little cap out of the handle here, like so, and uh, let's put some lubricant oil down in there. Okay, spin that up a little bit and pop the cap back in. All right, put that over to the side. Now we're going to remove the side case off of this. All right, that's got those three screws removed. They're all identical. We're going to set them over to the side. And see if we can remove this cover. Nope, we got one more screw here on the end. And I don't believe that that covers up a screw. But it does kind of hold the two plates together. So I'll take that screw out. Remove the end cap and no it does not have a screw there however we do have quite a bit of grease on there there we go remove the grease now the cap should come off the side plate all right all right it has grease in it but at least it's not gritty grease and let's see if the bearing will come off yes it does Let's take a look at our bearing. All right, that's nice and smooth. I am going to uh, clean that by spraying a little bit of WD-40 on it. That will help dissolve any old grease that's inside it. All right, now this main gear won't come out yet. And that's because we need to rotate this around. Bring it to here. If you bring it all the way back like so, you should be able to get to this screw. We're going to take this screw out now. And now we should be able to remove the axle shaft. Like so. With the axle shaft out now, we should be able to pull out the main gear. And yes, it's got some old grease in it. But, uh... It should clean up nicely. Set that over to the side. Make sure you don't lose these little shims right here. See the little shim washers on there? You don't want to lose those. Okay, with that done, we should be able to take out the crosswind block and the 
crosswind gear. Like so. All right, now we're gonna come back over here and remove this locking screw. That out. We should be able to remove the locking plate, although it's actually easier just to wait. Okay, now we're gonna remove this screw and I believe we can take this nut off using, yep, this nut driver. This is a uh, 7 sixteenths. Okay, that comes right off. And now we should be able to remove the rotor. And there's a washer inside here. Don't lose it. I've seen videos of people where they put this washer in the wrong place. No, that one doesn't want to come out. So we'll just leave it in there. That's good. Okay, set that off to the side. Now we're down to these three screws. And this is the simplicity of this thing. Um, there's no anti-reverse override. So it just has the anti-reverse clutch in it right here. And it uh, doesn't take much to take it out, clean it, and put it all back. Okay, there's our three screws. There's our bearing retainer plate. And now this should just pull out. If you have difficulty pulling it out, what you can do is put your rotor back on, put your nut on, and pull it out through there. Okay, now, there should be a plastic cap, I believe, inside here. There's definitely one here. Don't lose that. That gives you your spacing for your um, axle shaft. All right, we've got this out. Let's take a look at this bearing. Okay, this one is inside an insert. If you watch my pen pursuit, you can see that this reel is basically the same as the pen pursuit, but uh, part numbers are different. Okay. Okay, this washer goes on the front, or spacer goes on the front, and the bearing. Let's see how this bearing plays. It's smooth as can be, smooth as glass. We'll set it over to the side, give it a shot at WD-40. Okay, now we'll take this piece, set it over here so we know that bearing goes in it. There's our spacer over there. Now we're gonna take out our anti-reverse and you can see how it goes in. The plastic piece right here, see the plastic right here? That's gonna go up against this bearing that's up against the uh, pinion gear. So we'll take this out and we'll take our bearing off. And again, there's another shim washer right there. And that shim goes up against the pinion gear. Okay, we'll set that down now. And we're going to spray that bearing. Give that a chance to soak in. And I'm going to go off camera for a few minutes and clean all this up and get it all scrubbed clean. And I'm going to clean all these parts. And when we come back, we'll start the assembly process. I decided to take a moment to measure the bearings in this so that if somebody was looking for aftermarket parts, they could get them. This bearing right here. And let me get my pointer. This is the one that goes on the front of the... Um, This one that goes in here, okay? And it's an eight by 16 by five. This one right here goes up against the uh, pinion gear. Actually, it goes up against the shim that goes up against the pinion gear. That's this one. This one here is the same size. This goes in the right-hand crank uh, shaft, right? Up against here, like so. And this small one over here, that's an 8 by 12 by 3.5. It goes right here in the side case. Okay. So just in case any of you were interested in buying those parts aftermarket, uh, they are available. And uh, I gave you the sizes. You can do the research on your own. 
Okay, I'm going to oil each of those bearings. They've all been cleaned and soaked in solvent. And we'll let that oil soak in there. And we will begin the assembly process. All right, we're going to start off with our pinion gear here. And let's go ahead and grease it. And make sure your bushing is in the end of it here. Okay, with that done, we're going to come back and put this shim washer on. Right here. Goes on like so. Slide it down. The next one is going to be your bearing. And we will install that. Slide it down. The next part to be installed is going to be our anti-reverse clutch right here. And the plastic end of this goes towards the pinion, as I said before. Uh, if you know, need to know how to clean this, you can just take out the inner sleeve and just take a Q-tip and run it around on the inside of it like that. And try to get as much oils and grease out of there as you can. And then you can just simply slide the sleeve back in. Do not grease that. Grease or oil it. Okay. Then this is going to go back on to the shaft. Then that sleeve has got, a, got flat spots on it. It has to match up. And that goes down like so. Okay. Next to go on is going to be our larger bearing over here. That goes in here. Into this adapter. Or at least it should. There we go. It's a very precise fit, so if you get it off kilter, it's not going to want to go in. Uh, this part here goes to the rear, like so. Like that. And last but not least, goes your last shim washer. With all of that in place, you can now come back and reinstall all this assembly. And if you've got it correctly, you should be able to rotate your pinion shaft clockwise, and you will not be able to rotate it counterclockwise. Okay? With that done, we're going to come back and put our bearing retainer back on. And let's get you in a little closer, give a better picture. Hopefully, I'll remember to back that camera back out in a minute. With that done, we're ready to install, oh, first the side bearing. It's this little one that goes in this side over here. Get that pressed down in there. And while you're at it, go ahead and give it another drink of oil. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to do the same thing to this front one. Okay. Now we're going to grease up. The uh, crosswind block, or sorry, crosswind gear. Put a little grease on the inside, put it on the back side. Then put it on the gear teeth themselves. Put it down inside. Rotate it back to the rear so that that pin is facing the rear. Set it in place. Now we're ready to grease up the crosswind block. Now it only needs grease on the bottom. And it goes in like this. With that part done, it's time to grease the main gear. Then we're going to rotate that over and put it down inside there, like so. Now, you do not want to rotate this at that point. If you do, you're going to end up getting your um, block over here where it doesn't belong, and it can cause everything to bind up. So let's set that down for the moment. And let's turn, over, turn our attention 
to the uh, rotor. This rotor is performing flawlessly, but I am going to take it apart just so you can see how it goes. And uh, we're going to start off up here if it will come unscrewed. Remember, uh, if you do, I, I recommend not taking this apart. I'm only doing it because there are going to be some people out there who are going to have to take theirs apart because it's been sanded or dirty and or rusted, corroded, and they're going to have to take this off. That's the only reason I'm doing this. If your uh, rotor is performing well, leave it alone. Okay, take that out. And we're going to set this screw and put it back in here just like this. And that will help hold all of this together. Okay, we're going to go to the other side now. Take that side off. That screw out. That should take the bell wire off. You can clean and lubricate that as necessary. All right, now we're going to come over to this side. This is the side with all, where all the business happens. Okay, we've got a spring over here. And when we take this apart, we got to be careful not to allow that spring to shoot. Okay. There's our spring. Okay. And if you look, that spring, see how it works? Okay. really hate to take these off but we're gonna do it just because it's what we do here at young martin's reels i recommend not taking this off i repeat do not take this off unless you have to you might be able to take it apart that far just to get it clean and take it off okay we're going to ease this out that relieves the pressure off of the spring now we've got the spring out and we can take this out. That's our trip release. And now we will clean the grease out of this. I'll be right back. All right, we're back with this cleaned up now and we're going to start assembling it. And we're going to start off with applying a little grease, not the kind of grease that was in there uh, or as much, I hope. Hopefully I'll thin it out just a Tad, there we go. And uh, we're going to reassemble this. Okay, this is our trip lever right here. It goes into here. The long end goes into this bottom right here. And then it just falls in right there. Like so. All right. And if you look, it trips, it falls through here. And it's going to ride on this ramp right here. And that's what's going to trip the bale and flip it back over once it's up. Okay. The next part to go on is going to be this little piece right here. And this fits inside this hole right here, like so. We're going to put just a little bit of grease on the end of it, just so that it rides well. It doesn't wear a, the hole out larger. We're going to sit that into that, like so. And hopefully it's going to hold itself on while we put this in position. Okay. Okay. I'll set this into place like that. There we go. Now that part's in place, that part's in place, and we can put our screw back in. We don't have our spring on yet. That's okay. All right, that's got the screw back in. Now, see how this lever operates? And the only thing that needs to make it function properly is going to be that spring. So we're going to come back, and we're going to take the spring now, and we're going to hook it under here. And get it up onto that shaft. And it seems to work better in the up position. Okay, bring it down as far as you can. Now, do not let go of that spring until you know that you've got the end of it right up against this shoulder right here. Once you've got it there, you can go ahead and put this plate back on. If you want to, you can. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. If you want to, while it's in this position, you can come back and add just a little bit of grease 
to the spring and then put it back on, put the cap back on. There's enough grease there to last this for years and years and years and years and years without any trouble. All right. Now the bell wire fell off of this end over here because it's keyed. You can put it on and key it so that it rotates and stays in place. You have to get it in just the right position for it to go. There we go, like so. And now it won't fall off when it's locked in that position. Okay. I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna put that on this other side, like so. And put that screw back in. All right, I'll let the post get in the wrong position. There's a post on that that has to be in that slot. Let's go ahead and take it all the way off so you can see it. Okay, see this post right here? Well, that post has got to be in this slot. Let's see, upper, yeah, it's got to be in the upper slot. Like so. If you let it get into the lower slot, then uh, it won't allow it to flip like it's supposed to. That's the stop for it. Let's go ahead and take this off for a moment. And go ahead with that in that position and go ahead and put the screw back in. Hold the lever down so that it can't jump over to the next slot like it did last time. Okay, now that should be able to operate just like that. Now I'll come back, put this in find this lock and slide it over. All right, that brings us to the roller assembly. We'll now take the screw off. Now inside here, there's a metal washer. Let's see if I can get to where you can see it. There's a metal washer inside here that might have popped out if, on you. If it did, that's where it goes. Okay, we'll take the screw out. Now we'll take this roller assembly off. It should. I think it's got a plastic washer. Yep, it's got a large plastic washer here, like so. And then it's got this plastic sleeve. It's a bushing. And let's just push it out. Like so. And wipe it off. If it's got any kind of corrosion or anything on it, make sure to clean it off. Now take a cotton swab, clean the inside like so. And if you wish, you can put a tab of grease in there so that when you put your bushing back in, it's greased inside. Okay, come back, look at this side, make sure there's no corrosion, no dirt. If there isn't, let's go ahead, put the roller back on, put our washer back in place, set this back into the slot for it. And put the screw back in. Okay. The roller should still turn. It does. All right. Bail should flip easily. It does. All right. We are ready to put the rotor back on. Now we've got to find the flats in here. We do not want to rotate the rotor. We want to be able to set it in place and slide it on without rotating it. Like so. Okay, do not, you, you're going to be tempted to spin it. Do not do it. All right, we're going to come back now. We've still got our washer on here. We're going to put our nut on. Go ahead and tighten it. All right. Now, I'm, let's go ahead and put this on. I, I'm just afraid we're going to spin it, and we don't want to spin it. There we go. And we're ready to put this screw back in. See, it's already turned about 20 degrees that I didn't want it to turn. So hold that rotor. Do not allow it to rotate.
All right, if you were unable to keep this from rotating and this cross wound block has moved on up in here, go ahead and pull your main gear out and then set this rotor back to where you need it to be. Put your cross wound block back to where it should be and then put your main gear back in. All right, with that done, we're gonna take our axle shaft and oil it well. Let's put our screw back in the axle shaft. With that done, we check to verify that our shim plates, our shim washers are still on here. And then we put our side plate bearing back on and give it some oil again. At this point, we're ready to put our side plate back on. And I don't know if you've noticed it or not. We're going to zoom way in on this. Okay, these are the side plate screws. They are supposed to have these little clear washers on them. And those little clear washers are supposed to be water seals that keep water from getting into the threads on these. Um, this one was missing one to begin with. If you're missing them, it is not that big a deal. It just keeps water from getting into your threads. If you've lubricated your threads, put a little grease on them, hey, they're going to be fine anyway. But just in case you didn't see them, I'm telling you now that they're there. There's two of the three are here. The other one is missing. Okay. Now we're going to put these screws in. With that done, hey, now we're at a point where if you have a burning desire to rotate, you can. All right. This is a super quiet reel. All right. Um, we're going to put the bump guard on. Put the handle back on. All right, let's put our side cover back on. I took that off. You didn't see me take that off, but I took that off to pop that bearing out so we could measure it and lubricate and clean it. All right, that's got us down to doing our spool. And we're going to pop out the spring clip that holds the drag washers in. All right, we're going to take out the drag washers. All right, now this is a um, Pen Fierce 2, and it has the uh, felt drag washers in it. So, I was thinking when they came out with the Fierce 2 that they had replaced them with the, um, the footed Carbitex, but uh, these are definitely felt. So we'll put the first one in. They're nice and clean. We'll oil them because they are felt. Now we'll put the first keyed one in because it's got the flats on the center. Put that in. And on top of that, we'll set the next felt drag washer. And we'll oil that one. Next one to be installed is going to be this eared drag washer wipe it off a little bit and we're going to set it in it's got these little ears on it right here that they have to go into these slots on each side so we'll set that in then we're going to install one more 
felt drag washer. And install our last keyed washer. And then reinstall our clip. I always try to put these in with one leg of the clip just slightly past one of the holes on the side to make it easy to get to when I want to take it out again. All right, make sure it's in the groove. Once that's done, let's take a look underneath. We'll wipe out the inside. And we'll put just a little bit of oil on this lower drag washer. And it really doesn't need it, I don't think, because it's Teflon. And then we're going to put a little oil on our clicker. And the reason, besides making it easy to move, if water gets onto these, they have a tendency to rust up. So if you've got it oiled well, then it's not likely to rust. All right, we're going to put that on, give it a little turn so that it falls down to where it needs to be, like so. Check our drag knob, which this one happens to be very dirty. All right, that's got it cleaned up nice. Let's put that back on. I did get a surprise package this week from Dan Selvig. And uh, Dan sent me this. It's a Berkeley line stripper. And he sent a letter along with it. It says, Rick, I noticed in one of your videos you began to strip line from a spool by hand. I don't know if you already have one of these battery-powered Berkeley line strippers. They really make the job of pulling old line off a spool much faster. If you already have one, great. Uh, keep this one as a spare or give it to one of your fishing buddies who change out line often. Uh, yours truly, Dan Selvig. Dan, I really, really appreciate that. And uh, I don't have one of these. What I do use is this beast. Uh, but I only use it when I'm doing several reels at a time. If I'm doing just one, I usually hand strip. So since I'm usually hand stripping sitting in front of my TV... I'm going to add this guy to uh, my little flotilla of tools that I keep sitting beside my uh, my TV chair. So let's uh, let's give this guy a try. And this little instruction sheet right down here probably tells me they have to be alkalines, and these are not alkalines. But we'll give them a shot. Because it's what my wife went and bought. Okay. If I can ever get the cover back on. All right, let's see. All right. Now, let's see what comes in this instruction package. All right. Insert the line into the hole on the right-hand side. Press and hold the button to strip line from your reel. Notice the arrow button at the top. Okay, so let's give this thing a try. <laughs> All right. You insert the line from the side, I'm assuming, like so. Hmm. Tell I got some old line here. Oh, 
Well, look at that. Ain't that just snazzy. That guy's going to go sitting in there beside my chair where I strip wine every now and then. And uh, we'll go ahead and snap that off. And this guy's ready for me to install wine on. Dan, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And uh, there you guys have it. The Let's see here. Get this guy cleaned up. Push the button, get the line out of it. All right, there we go. That goes in the pile. There we have it. The uh, Pen Fierce 2 3000 model. I'm going to put some 10 pound test line on this one and put it on my boat. It's going to go on a reel or on a rod. And uh, everything on it functions properly. And uh, Anti-reverse is functional. That is one sweet reel. Um, Michael, who gifted me these, or found these for me, uh, I appreciate that. And uh, Dan, I appreciate the line stripper. I'm going to make good use of that. And for those of you out there, if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. If you'd like to see more videos like this and you aren't currently subscribed, hit the subscribe button. If you'd like notifications that we're gonna that I'm putting out new videos, uh, please hit the uh, notification button. And for now, that's Rick Stivers of the Young Martin's Reels signing out. <laughs> nope, I'm not signing out just yet. I did just get a text from Mario, and Mario's got his first fishing video up. And man, did Mario have a good week! And also, uh, he went out Saturday, and I think he caught something like 30 reds. Only got to keep three, but you know he had a great time fishing. And uh, he's got his new video uh, channel up, and I'm going to endorse him on that. And uh, now I'm done. <laughs>